And uh, have you felt queasy when crossing the Atlantic recently? Climate change could mean more flights between here and the States get a lot more turbulent in future. This is according to researchers in Reading. Uh, would that put you off or would you uh, clutch your sick bag, grin and bear it? Would it still be worth it? 084... Nothing's as much fun these days, have you noticed? 0845 301 1034. BBC Radio Devon, Bruno Mars, When I Was Your Man. 20 to 7, uh, are you ready for a bumpy ride? Climate change could mean flights between here and the States could get a lot more turbulent in future. Researchers at the University of Reading say the increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is changing the air currents along transatlantic flight paths, and this could therefore make plane journeys more choppy. Dr Paul Williams is from the University of uh, Reading, but he's escaped, haven't you, Paul? Good evening, Bill. Yes, we escaped to Vienna. To lovely... Vi How is the weather in Vienna? Uh, it's about as cold, cold as it is back home, I would think. It's been a few days since I was in Britain. But... Right. But you got all that lovely hot chocolate and cakes to, uh, to bolster yourself up. Apple strudel for dinner every night. Very, very nice. <laughs> um, why is this happening? Why does an increase in carbon dioxide mean bumpy plane journeys? Well, it's an interesting question because we mostly associate climate change with it getting warmer right at the bottom of the atmosphere where we live. But what is less well recognised is that it's also changing the atmosphere 10 kilometres up. And in particular, it's ch the, the temperature difference between the uh, equator and the North Pole 10 kilometres up is getting stronger. And it's that temperature difference that is driving the jet stream and making it blow more strongly. And it's that that is making the atmosphere more susceptible to the sort of instabilities that cause clear air turbulence to form. Right. So has the bumpiness started already? There's some evidence that it might have done. There's been a couple of academic studies which have claimed to maybe to have detected some increase. But in both cases, they've, there have been other explanations that could have caused it, such as um, changes in the, in the data that have been used. So there's been no definitive evidence until now. And now, as that we're publishing this week is certainly the first study to look at the future of aviation turbulence. Right. And it, will it remain a, a problem peculiar to flights across the Atlantic, or will it happen in other parts of the world? Well, we focused on the Atlantic because it's a very busy part of airspace. Uh, there are 600 planes every day crossing the Atlantic, 300 westbound and 300 eastbound. Um, but the jet stream, of course, is not just confined to the North Atlantic. It goes all the way around the Northern Hemisphere, and um, it's increasing in strength all the way around. So, yeah, we'd expect to see the same things in other parts of the globe, but that's something we're going to do in future. Right. And just how bumpy might it get? Well, in the supercomputer simulations that we've looked at, we've found that the average strength of turbulence will increase by between 10 and 40%, but perhaps more worryingly, we've found that the amount of airspace that contains significant turbulence at any one time is likely to double by the middle of this century. So that means that a pilot taking off from um, Heathrow, for example, flying across to the US, will be staring twice as, twice as much turbulence in the face and will have a, possibly have to fly in more of a, a wiggly line rather than a straight line, which of course will increase journey times and delays at airports and that sort of thing. Well, I was going to ask you whether the ways in which a pilot can avoid it, so he can, he can wiggle, can he go higher or lower, or is there anything else that he can do? Yeah, they can go left, right, up and down, and um, uh, the, one of their main sources of information is the previous pilot to have flown that route, um, because whenever a pilot detects turbulence, they log it and, and it gets passed on to the next pilot. And in fact, the first flight of the day on any particular route is usually p particularly susceptible to turbulence because they don't have that prior information from the previous pilot. Goodness me, so as if Red Eye wasn't bad enough, you also get the bumpiest flights. <laughs> yes, I, I always avoid the first flight of the day if I can. Yeah. Very good. What are the airlines saying about this? Have they reacted yet? Uh, I haven't spoken to them myself because uh, we've been waiting for the study to come out and it's just come out uh, this week in Nature Climate Change, one of the journals. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'll be very interested to hear their thoughts. I mean, they're aware that turbulence is a problem. It costs them a lot of money each year, uh, tens of millions of... of tens of millions? Does it really? Gosh. It does, and that's the cost of, of human injuries, because hundreds of passengers are injured every year. Gosh. You know, we think of turbulence as maybe it knocks your drink over or some, some minor inconvenience. Yeah. In fact, it does... Uh, passengers 
almost always passengers who have not had their seatbelt on when the seatbelt sign is not on um, and suddenly you hit unexpected turbulence they will tend to fly around the plane and, and maybe maybe bang their head on the top of the plane and, and that causes perhaps a fractured skull but also maybe damages the aircraft in fact I've seen a picture of one aircraft which encountered very severe turbulence and in the middle of the flight the turbulence was so strong that one of the engines actually snapped off and <gasps> the ground this is very rare of course yes this has only happened once in 20 or 30 years but it just shows you how strong it can be sometimes well it's a, it's a rather gloomy outlook isn't it i mean do you think it will finally uh, final question do you think it will affect how much we actually fly then do you think we'll, we'll cut back because it'll be so unpleasant or so expensive or both well what we're predicting is that the amount of turbulence in the atmosphere will increase from one percent as it is at the moment one percent of their space is turbulence at any time we're predicting, that, we're predicting that that will become 2%. So it will still be the case that 98% of the atmosphere is, is smooth. I don't think this will put anyone off flying. Right. But I do think it will make flying less comfortable and more of an annoyance to people and, and may increase the risk of uh, broken bones as well. But, but I do stress that they are rare. Yeah, so we've, we've put it into perspective. Listen, safe flight home from Vienna. <laughs> thank you very much, and Bill. Thank, you. thank you. Paul, uh, Dr Paul Williams from the University of Reading. Isn't that interesting? My goodness.